The penultimate race of the season takes us to a new venue. Well, not quite a new venue, but at the very least, a new circuit. Silverstone has undergone layout changes many, many times in its history, and in a recent build, iRacing has introduced the latest alterations to this classic track. So while this series has raced at Silverstone multiple times, it's going to take some practice for everyone to adjust to some new corners. We'll see who adapts best as we get ready to watch round 13 of the Autobahn Sports Car Challenge. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. And the I uh, and uh, hello once again. My name is Joe Peak. With me in the booth covering the prototype and GTLM classes is Bill Suzon. Keeping us up on the GTD class is Adam Lindgren. Behind the scenes is our director, the Dr. Amjad Yaman, and he's using cameras provided by Ducky Beard. Now, Silverstone has become one of the most famous tracks in the UK over time, but to find out a little bit more, let's take a closer look at a few of the details and quirks about the home of British motorsports. Welcome to Silverstone. Most famously known for being the first circuit to host a round of Formula One, this place has since become synonymous with British motorsports. Hosting everything from sports cars to touring cars to open wheels and even motorcycles, it's a track that fits a wide variety of vehicles. With three different layouts to choose from, you've got a little something for any level of racing. The longest of those layouts boasts 18 turns along 3.19 miles. That comes out to 5.13 kilometers in metrics, so it can take a bit to get around it, even in higher powered machinery. Its main characteristics are the high speed straights and corners and general lack of elevation change. Its most famous set of turns is most definitely the Maggots Beckett sequence, in which anything with high downforce finds itself challenged with the rapid changes of direction. However, don't discount the first couple corners in this latest iteration of the track. Abbey and Farm often require a greatly balanced car and some serious bravery if you're side by side. Corners such as Village, Brooklyn, Stowe and Vale see the majority of overtaking action, but in cars with less horsepower, expect the draft to offer other opportunities. The hangar straight is perhaps the most notorious for draft battles to erupt. All in all, this versatile racetrack located just northwest of London provides both history in its roots and action on the tarmac. The huge number of British fans that typically attend events are seldom left wanting. As we just saw, Silverstone is known for being a favorite for multi-class series like Autobahn. Originally requisitioned from an abandoned site of an RAF bomber station in 1948, the track has gone through a lot of changes between then and now. The current Grand Prix layout circuit that they're racing tonight has been in use since 2011, but it seems some significant repaves in the last couple of years after complaints of dangerous bumps through some of the sweeping corners and down the straights. The prototypes tonight will have brought a setup that is hopefully well balanced between downforce and top speed, as the long straights will punish any unnecessary drag, and the wide track will make draft passing easy. The GTLM drivers will be in the same struggle, but will be less affected by arrow wash off their competitors than the prototypes, allowing them to follow quite close to the high speed corners. The GTDs will struggle tonight as their mechanical downforce favored cars will tend to burn up the front tires quickly around Silverstone. For all classes, building a gap of over a second and a half to the driver behind will be crucial to not falling victim to draft passes on the straights, and managing your tire wear will be critical to keep the lap times up over the course of this race. Also crucial to understanding tonight is the points situation. So how are things looking in the scoring booth, Bill? All right, let's go through these. we got four of them to talk about. We'll start with the prototypes. You know, when you clinch it before the finale, you are really dominant when you clinch it in the penultimate event, man, I don't know what you are. You are you're 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 a you're a deity. That's what Jason Gerard has done up there. Not only that, he's got 24 uh, insurance points in his pocket if he needs them. He is our uh, prototype champion. You can see that Olmer sits in second, too far back. Jar falling off the chart was Scott McGarvey and Mr. Carter Cundinger. So that gives an opportunity for Billy Smith to get back on there. Dean Mole moves up the spot, and welcome to the overlay, Leif Peterson. All right, let's go down to the GTLMs. Now, Dan here, Steve McGarvey's win last time in Australia. If you know, if that's not the final nail in the coffin, it is nearly the final nail. He's got a 40-point gap over Mike Young. That is a big interval. William Lester sits in third, 88 points back. But then we get to the guys in fourth and fifth, and that's really the only position that is for battle, and it's kind of an homage to, I don't know if you want to, uh, Tony James and the Shundells or Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, but it's 
It's the TMC sister teams of Crimson and Clover sporting Jason DeVries and uh, who's now all alone in fourth, uh, eight points ahead of Olivier Tricot. Let's go down to the GTDs and the AM classes. Hey, 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 we got ourselves a battle. Now, Kevin Santana has two wins and five podiums. In contrast, Mike Majors is winless. Only four podiums, but only one result. Get this, outside of the top ten, while Santana has three of them. You add that thing up, and that's why you got yourself a deadlock there. A classic example of too little, too late is Paul Slavonic boasting a pair of wins and a pair of thirds in his last four outings. Lionel Duprat has a win. Uh, he got that at the ring. Shane Hunter was fifth last time at Phillip Island, but Duprat was one position better, breaking the tie for fourth and pushing to, uh, pushing uh, Hunter down into fifth. Finally, we go to the team championship there, and it's SRN Orange. They're a couple of SRN Gray. Uh, well back in second. I don't think anyone's going to get to Mole, McGarvey, McLeish, and Young sitting at the top down there. SRN Black rounds out the overlay in fifth. Joe, there you have it. Thanks for that, Bill. Now, uh, we also might have viewers who are watching for the first time here for the Autobahn series. If so, you're in for a treat. But Adam, in case they don't know exactly how this all works, why don't you fill us in on the race details? Definitely. This is round 13 of 14, the penultimate round, as we've been saying all night. This is a multi-class series, so we've got three classes. The prototypes, the GTLMs, and our amateur series, the GTDs. Setups are open, and they have 67% fuel, so there will be a pit stop tonight. Race distance is going to be 60 minutes of time around here at Silverstone. Incident cab is going to be 24, and you do not get a spare car, so take care of that baby tonight. Thanks for that. Uh, qualifying currently underway, and Billy Smith is your provisional pole sitter uh, after his win last uh, round at Phillip Island. Uh, Josh Wolf, interestingly, is the one who is on the front row, but he's all three tenths behind. Clearly has some pace to try and make up. So as we watch them try to work that out, we'll keep you up to date if anybody changes that. But Bill, I'm um, looking at the point situation that uh, you were going over. Now, math isn't always our strong suit, but by my calculations, uh, it looks like for Young to be able to stay in this thing, he has to outscore McGarvey by 18 points today if he hopes to take it to this last round uh, at Spa. Yeah, That's and even, not going to be easy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't want to say it was over, but it's... Uh... Unless McGarvey just has a total meltdown, and that's really not what Steven is known for doing. He's just got to be consistent. Say anywhere close to Young, and, and we should be in pretty good shape here. You know what's interesting? You talked about the front types, Billy Smith being at the top. I see that Jason Gerard is here, but it's not put in the qualifying time. I think Jason may be thinking about starting from the back. That'd be fun. Yeah, I suspect he's just looking to have some fun. And these final two rounds, now that he's clinched it, we're watching Lee Peterson, who's starting... On the inside of the second row, this latest lap was an improvement, but doesn't take him higher up the sheets. He stays in third with that 47-1. Down in the GTDs, we talked about uh, between uh, the tie, how close it is. But uh, even though Slavonic is a little bit back here, Adam, uh, again, I did a little bit of calculations. From what I can tell, uh, with the drop points, I believe, uh, that uh, the 16 that Major has, I think he has to outscore Major by six points to still be mathematically in it. So again, not impossible, a little bit difficult, but uh, even with the problems that we saw Slavonic have with the early wreck at Phillip Island, it, it seems like momentum is heavily in his favor. You know, Slavonic's really, really fast, but you know, like Soup said, it's a little bit too late at this point. I mean, he can still be up there and challenged, but that means that Mike, both Mike Major and Kevin Santana are going to have to have bad nights. And with Kevin Santana starting in third, that's not likely to happen. The real surprise is Mike Major. His qualifying lately has not been going well. He qualified back in sixth place last week, and he's qualified sixth again tonight. That's not, that's making things a lot harder for you to try and win the championship. We know he's fast on race pace, but if he can improve his qualifying times, he's really going to be in a good position to secure a lot of points early on next season. To Savlonic's, yeah, to, yeah. This hard to put in, but to Savlonic's advantages, at least he's got, uh, he's got the two guys, Santana and Majors, who have to race for the championship, so they both can make mistakes. That's different from what Young has to do, where, where McGarvey just has to cruise around and just get a good finish. That's a fair point. Uh, and as I was going to say, speaking of improving lap times, we saw on the screen Billy Smith 
uh, going even faster with a 46-4. That puts him three tenths clear, not of Josh Wolf, of Scott McGarvey. Actually, almost four tenths clear now of the number 64. So Wolf is bumped to row two in his 148. Has some time left on the board to try and get closer. In fact, Wolf looks like he is coming up through Vale just now. Let's see if he can get another clean time in. A number of drivers have had trouble with off courses. And then he's had trouble this time as well as he gets another blank time on that lap. That's one of the things that uh, I noticed here, Adam, with this new update is that it's it's a more modern F1 course. So there's a lot of paved runoff around. Yeah, and that paved runoff is going to be great during the race. But during qualifying, you lose all your lap times around here just from going off into some of the runoffs that we see the f1 drivers take on a you know daily basis when they draw lap base lap by lap basis so when they drive around here so it's just adjusting your expectations to fall within iRacing's very strict uh, policy when it comes to off tracks they want to make sure everyone is just using the racing surface and we really can't fault them for that it does produce good racing i have to agree now I'm looking at Dean Mole after a great performance early on at Phillip Island, Bill. His qualifying is not looking good today. He's all the way down in seventh out of eight cars that have set time so far in this session. If he's going to have that race pace, he's certainly putting himself in a, a difficult spot. Yeah, behind uh, drivers like Sheldon Rosenbaum and Mark Wilson. Maybe he knows that Gerard's going to be starting back there. Maybe he wants to get on the coattails of Jason Early and follow him through. I like what Josh Wolf has done sitting in third. And how about, you know, we talked about, oh, oh, as we look there, stop and Garvey moves up now into second. Yeah, there we go. As Mo oh, there, you're talking about Dean Mole. There you have it, Joe, third spot. <laughs> so he says, oh, were you talking about me being slow? I'm not slow. 46-9 on the board. Good enough for third for the number 79. Oh, but he gets knocked down to fourth as well as Leif Peterson also improves. The, the number 39 now knocks out a 146.966. It is very tight be between himself and Mole for that second row. These are two drivers that started the season off well towards the back, didn't yep. look like they had a handle on the HPD, and now suddenly, end of the season, they've got some sea legs. I guess they're building momentum for next season. They'd like this to go on for a, another five or six more races. They could move up. Peterson and Mole, both really fast at the end of the season. I like it when, when we have Mole and Wolf, when the animals like to get together on the track. That's good. <laughs> Mole and fourth, Wolf and fifth. I think we cracked some jokes about that last time as we watched uh, Kanchen going around there for a moment. This is Sheldon Rosenbaum down in seventh. Another thing about this track that was changed is club corner here. It was slightly altered they call it reprofiling uh just basically tightened up the apexes so it's more square this last lap for him unfortunately did not count for sheldon rosenbaum even, uh, though it looked like he kept it within the bounds through the new club and veil yeah guys and one of the reasons why we're seeing faster times now is that this session is actually going closer into the early evening so the track is cooling off as, it get, as the sun angle gets lower and lower. So this is kind of the golden hour for the lap times right now, right in these this last minute. And unlike last time, I made prominent notes this time. Uh, qualifying is in the evening, just like we saw at Phillip Island, and the race will be uh, the following day in the afternoon, same time, 3 p.m. virtual standard time here in the UK. So they will get a, a day race that'll be actually fairly hot. We'll see how hot on the track surface is Lee Peterson tries to improve on this third and he does he goes up to second onto the front row wow so let's see if wolf has a response he used to be on the front row he's got enough time for one more lap in fact he's only set one timed lap here bill his three others that he's come around he's all had offs that might explain why he's fallen down so far yeah, Joshua has spent his time in all three classes this season, working through, trying to find the car he looks. I think he's found his calling here. He's had the best results, I think, in the prototypes if he comes back next season. This is where I'd like to see him stick, see if he can make a run at, uh, if not the championship, at least a podium spot. Well, his, his run through the loop certainly didn't look too clean. Hopefully he didn't have an off track with that one, but the car was squirming around under the power with all the downforce being uh, potentially taken off for the high speed straights. Comes up to one of them right now, along the old pitch straight up to Cops. Incredibly fast flick through this right-hander. 
That looked pretty clean. Now, a real test for the downforce here, Adam. The maggots and Beckett sequence. Yeah, this is a really, really tough sequence, even on the best of days. you got to rely on that downforce. And this is where all of your setup is kind of focused. It's making sure that you get this really comfortable, the maggots and Beckett sequence. And if you can get that comfortable, then you just have to figure out whether or not you're willing to sacrifice your straight line speed to make sure that you have enough downforce to make those corners work for you under ideal conditions. Up and over the crest through Stowe, it plunges back down into Vale. He's going to complete the lap, even though the checkered flag has come out. He is allowed to complete it. Anybody on a hot lap is able to come around and finish up. Let's see if this is any better. He crosses the line. He does count to the lap, but it's not an improvement, unfortunately. And he is the last car to be able to complete a lap. So that finish out, finishes out our qualifying. The grid is set here for the penultimate round of the Autobahn Sports Car Challenge. Let's read you through it. Starting on the pole, it is going to be Billy Smith. He took his second win of the season at Phillip Island. Could be looking to carry that momentum on here through to the UK. Leif Peterson going to try and deny him another win. Take his first win of the season here in the prototypes. He'll be starting from second. Scott McGarvey will be in third. Then it's Dean Mole starting P4, proving that once again, he is in fact faster at the end of the season. Josh Wolf, unfortunately, as the temperatures fell, his times did not fall because he could not count times. He'll start from P5. Mark Wilson will be in six with Sheldon Rosenbaum in seventh. Robert Kanchin, the last of the drivers to get a time in and qualifying P8. And Jason Gerard did not get a qualifying time in. He will be gridded up ninth of the prototypes. Bill? Again, a lot of points to be had in the GTLMs as there are only eight drivers here. Dennis Sabrinic is on pole. He's going to be flanked by William Laster. Stephen McGarvey, our points leader, sits in third with Daniel Peralti outside of him. Now, Mike Young is trying to catch McGarvey. We'll see what he can do. He's two spots back. Olivier Turcotte is going to be flanking him with Ryan Huff on the inside of row four. And then you're going to see Joey Trungle farther back. He qualified somewhere in the GTDs. We'll get that sorted out. Adam? Paul Slavonic is going to take pole in the largest class we have here tonight alongside Tyler Gilmet. Those two guys starting on the front row. Kevin Santana starting on the inside of row two. Then we got Lionel Duprat on his outside. Shane Hunter down there on row three alongside Mike Major. Not a great qualifying for him. Eric Intilli going to start on row four for the GTDs alongside Gerard Gilbert with Chris Sherburn in row five with alongside Mark Kudrowski and Matt Owens and Alan Hesbeck are going to round out your GTD field. So as we watch them now grid up, they are going to start uh, just before Stowe at the end of the hangar straight. Very short run before they'll get going, but it is also an earlier pit entry in this newer version of the track. So they'll be released and they'll have to wait until halfway through club before they'll allow the HPDs to accelerate. I'm so confused. Yeah, I know. I know, Bill. Don't worry, you'll make it through. It's only the start of the race. Uh, however, it will have an effect, of course, on when they pit uh, because you're coming in at a decent speed uh, into that pit entry. So drivers will certainly have to practice that to get the most uh, out of coming into the pits. And then it'll bleed them back a little bit farther down as they come through farm. See them lining up there at the end of that hangar straight just a couple cars left to get out there then we'll get rolling let's go to our picks for the day bill who do you see winning in your two classes billy smith on the pole let's give billy smith the win go down to the gtlms uh let's go chalk i'll stay with the pole sitters dennis serbetic adam uh, guys, I gotta be honest, I think Paul Slavonic's gonna take it tonight. He's been really consistent on tracks that are like this, and so I think, even though it's a little bit too late for him to really pull up into that points battle, unless the other two guys have a problem, I think Paul's got this on lock for the win tonight. Alright, let's see, as it's a pretty safe bet here for the field. If they can follow up on that, it looked good for Jason Girard at Phillip Island, and he didn't take it home there as Billy Smith came from a ways back to take that victory. Could uh, get uh, a bit of that today, maybe? We'll see. As just now, the Porsche pace car takes off, leading Smith up towards Stowe with Leif Peterson to his outside. 
This is one of those long straights we were talking about where they'll build up speed. The draft could yet come into play, and we might see a lot of passes into that corner. There goes the Porsche pace car off into the pit entry lane. They'll have to go very slowly here through Vale. It is a tight corner. Then as they weave back right, a little bit farther up the road, they'll be able to accelerate away. You can see they're already slightly out of order there. As Smith waits, waits, green flag is out for Billy Smith. He gets a very good jump. That inside line, though, checked up behind him. Leif Peterson getting speed around the outside as they come through the Swift Abbey off to the right-hand side. And it looks clean. Let's go to the GTLMs. So Redick with a great start. Laster tucks into second. There is a battle for third with McGarvey being challenged. Ralty on the outside. They all much touch. Ralty goes wide. They get that sorted out. Adam, how's it going in the GTDs? It was a little bit hesitant for everybody when getting started. So Paul Slavonic actually got a really good jump with Tyler Gilmet getting a good jump as well. But there's a quite a battle going on for the about third through 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 seventh right now in the back of the field. They're all kind of clustered right next to one another. And it looks like everyone's going to be okay back there. So all single file at this stage. Not so single file in the prototypes because Dean Mole is very much challenging Josh Wolf for that fourth spot. They've been side by side since Brooklyn's. Now as they come through Woodcote, they still don't have it settled. This could get Harry coming through cops. This is a very fast corner and Wolf is going to win that game of chicken. And Mole loses momentum. Now he falls back into the clutches of Mark Wilson. He has a great racing going on up here for fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And that's not over yet. Wilson as well gets slowed up. Kanchin takes a peek on the inside of him. That slows him up. It's a chain reaction. Effectively, Sheldon Rosenbaum taking advantage of that. He comes around the outside, and now as they fly down the hangar straight, that brings him to the inside of Stowe. He's going to have to be good on the brakes. Let's see if he can find the grip on the inside racing line. Not as well as Robert Kanchin carrying the momentum. He's fighting hard for this seventh spot. They now break for Vail, and he finally gets it done. That went on for quite a while. We're going to finish the first lap, and we're going to give credit to Billy Smith leading it. You can see back in the GTLM, Svredic is ahead of Laster. They're starting to gap third place. McCarthy behind them. It's about a second to that orange and white number 14. As we uh, right on board with Laster now looking up ahead. Garvey had a very scary moment on the very first lap. He almost got together with Gralty. They got it sorted out, and now they're racing single file. But Garvey sits third in class with a young who's trying to catch him in the points back in fifth. Making a mistake is Turcotte. Oh. Going yeah. around. That is, uh, I guess Turcotte gets around. The mistake was made by Young. Oh, but Young gets it right back. In fact, it's a horrible exit onto the Wellington straight for Turcotte because here's Ryan Huff there in the 4GT. You see to his inside. Not as strong on the brakes as Turcotte into Brooklyn's, though. So it looks like Olivier is going to retain that sixth position for the moment. Nice to see that Ford out there. Porsche is not looking too good today, though. You can see two of them here back at the back of the pack as Huff gets another run. Look into the inside of Cop's corner. He's given space, but Turcott still holds him back. Turcott, one of our Porsche drivers, young as well. And the only other one in the field is Laster. He's running in second, the best of the Porsches right now. Yeah, guys, the GTD battle for P1 is getting a little bit spicy. Tyler Gilmet is putting a lot of pressure on Paul Slavonic, and we've seen how susceptible Paul Slavonic is to pressure from behind, and they both have actually been making significant mistakes, getting offs in a couple of different corners, and here as they get onto the straight, both of them pretty clean, but it's not the cleanest running we've seen them do. They're both under significant pressure right now, with Tyler trying to catch Paul really hard. Another update is that Mike Major has been really struggling on the straights. Oh my goodness, take a look at Gilmet trying to make this lunge down here. It's not going to work out for him. But Mike Major's been really struggling. He's been, he just ha does not have the straight line speed. He must have gone with a conservative setup when it comes to downforce, and it's really hurting his straight line speed for sure. Look at this, Kevin Santana catching up to the top three as well. That's bad news for Mike Major. 
and bad news for both Gilmet and Slavana because if they start fighting, Santana could suddenly get into the mix as they stay very close. Gilmet with one win so far this season at Road America, as well as a second place at Monza. He's looking for a second win, potentially. He sends it in deep down into Village. Doesn't quite come off, though. I think that's going to allow Santana to get to the inside. It is Santana just barely able to hang on to. Let's see whether or not he can come off of this. Oh, he just barely can. Tyler Gilmet holds onto it as they get onto the scrape. Yeah, Aintree ruined things for Santana. He falls well back. Thankfully for him, Shane Hunter is not close enough to capitalize as they now come through Brooklyn's. So your order for the top five there, the GTDs, the Slavonic, Gilmet, Santana, Hunter, Duprat. Through Woodcoat, the GTD cars go. We haven't hit traffic quite yet. A long lap around here and the prototypes still have a ways before they catch the tail of the GTDs. Just an update. Yeah. In case you were oh. wondering, Jason Girard. Uh oh, go ahead, Joe. Uh, sorry, Josh Wolf just set the fastest lap and immediately spins the car. I think this happened in farm. Uh, looks like we got through Abby okay and then suddenly you know, in that, that track video we watched, Adam, I mentioned how you need a really oh. well-balanced car through those and series of S's. Director, right after the spin, go up to Mark Wilson if we can, because there's an accident that happens right now. Wilson, well, it was in the replay. Wilson made contact, I believe, right after that with, with the driver. Let's see if we can find this. Did you see who he had contact? Yeah, it was it was Wilson and Mole get together. Oh, you're right. It was also almost into, simultaneously. It was into Village. Mole was sort of caught off guard there. You see it right there. And Wilson tries to sneak through when he's distracted. Unfortunately, shoves him out of the way. As so we come up to the prototype lead. Billy Smith is holding Lee Peterson at arm's length, but Scott McGarvey, look at this. Seeing if he can sneak into second. Yeah, I don't know if Peterson is having trouble keeping pace with Smith or if or if uh, McGarvey's coming, but McGarvey now much closer to Peterson than Peterson is to Smith. Keeping half an eye on this and half an eye on the GTD lead because both have been fairly close and some great action bubbling and brewing up. Peterson coming now through the section where we saw Wolf have his issues. Adam, there's been some debate on the forums of this series when it was announced that this was the track they would race because uh, I believe initially the schedule before this track was released said Silverstone Historic on the old scan of Silverstone. Oh boy. Some of the drivers don't seem like a big fan of this layout though. Well, yeah, it's just, it, it, a lot of drivers would say it lacks character. And by that, they mean it's just a little bit too smooth, a little bit too easy. There's too much runoff. It's too, it just, it makes it way too easy to make mistakes and not be punished for them. And so it's one of those tracks that, that you can get away with a lot here. And drivers don't like that because they like to, to outsmart the, their opponents behind. This front running GTD battle, to be honest, has been extremely messy, extremely scrappy, but you see how close it still is. And that's just because of the nature of the track and the layout. It allow it has a lot of forgiveness for mistakes that you make. Going into this corner here, there's a ton of paved runoff for you to take if you miss this and go too wide. So that's just one of the things that's just a difference of opinion between different driver, drivers in different series. One thing that isn't forgiving, though, is the incident limit. And if you keep going off into that paved runoff, you'll get enough of them that you're going to disappear. Remember, they have 24 to deal with around the track today. And that's over 60 minutes of racing. They certainly have to be careful as we go back to the GTLMs. This is between Savretic and Laster. Tip of the hat to Laster. He's been waiting for a breakout race all season long. He's right there now, really giving Sobretic everything he wants. Very smooth. Don't know if he's actually going to try to make the pass until maybe after the pit stops. In fact, they're maybe saving a little fuel. Might be able to do it in pit lane. 
we've seen Laster have some speed. I'll have to go and look at his exact stats on where his finishes have been. He's been there, thereabouts in a lot of yep. races. We've seen him grab top fives, get on the podium. But uh, you're right. It's where have we really seen him be phenomenal? He is right there now. So Reddick is uh, just these guys have pulled away. Try as he might, Stephen McGarvey trying to stay with these guys. That's not happening. Ralty and Mike Young rounding out your top five. Oh, that's a great shot. Director, can we just stay on that shot the entire time? That was wonderful. <laughs> now, interesting. I, I talked about those stats. I went back and checked real quick. Laster has missed a lot of races as well, we should point out. He probably would have been a little bit higher in the championship otherwise. But get this, Bill. He's only had one finish out of the top five in all of his starts yeah. this season. That is impressive. We watch him come down the Wellington straight behind Savretic. Savretic is a tough cookie, though. If he's going to have to take a win here today, he's going to have to fight hard. It's also may be interesting to watch, come back and watch this when they get to be involved in traffic, either the Perpets going around them or getting around the GTDs. Although, Joe, a smaller field today, we really didn't talk about it. Lap traffic not going to be as big of an issue as it is oh, for a typical and cycle. And Tyler Gilmet has gone around. He got he got his foot, feet in the gravel a little bit, and he just spun, a, spun it around right in front of Kevin Santana. That's a free position to Santana. And that second place lost for the number five. It was out of the loop. You'll see here on the replay. There's that wheel off, and away he goes. Even though Santana got that position, the good news for Mike Majors is he got around uh, Gilmet as well before he got it back on the track. So Majors still stuck Santana with a couple of cards as a cushion. I was going to say, though, he's he's got to start making some moves and really get himself ahead of the 903. Duprat and Shane Hunter, the two drivers that split them. Yeah, and like I said earlier, guys, it's just one of those things where I just don't think Mike Major has the setup to do it. He is not slippery enough on the straights to get a good slingshot. In fact, I don't believe we have seen... No, in fact, we haven't seen any... Aside from Matt Owens, we haven't seen any passes on track for position in the GTD class tonight. So it's just a really tough track for them right now. So down the hangar straight. Lap, the top lap traffic Go ahead. time. Let's take a look at Billy Smith now, because this is getting interesting. They got into the lap traffic. The first one they came up with, uh, Gerald, uh, Gerard Gilbert. They get around them. Now he starts to open up. Smith has a, a, some clear track ahead him before they get to uh, Chris Sherburn. Just want to update our audience uh, in case there's any fans of Jason Gerard. He did not start this race, uh, so we only have an eight-car field in the prototypes. But the top of it, who we're riding with right now, our leader, Billy Smith, is being very hotly followed by Leif Peterson and Scott McGarvey. With all this traffic in their way now, this could simply erupt at any moment, especially in fast corners like this where there's a different closing speed. Uh, Peterson had a great run. He's right there now and he touches him. He gives him a little bump and run going off. Is Smith give the position and now he gets into it and he spins around Matt Owens. Uh, Owens not uh, fully aware, it seemed, that he was there. It was three wide granted, so he was certainly in a tough spot. So that sends him backwards. Peterson now in the lead. McGarvey second as we watch the replay from above. There's the contact. That white car is Billy Smith. He comes back. Owens in the black GTD car goes around as Smith was Smith just was just simply trying to get himself back on course here. That's yeah, but at the same Owens. time... Yeah, at the same time, guys, as Matt Owens, I'm really frustrated with that. You can't be paying attention to guys who are off track. You have to expect them to get back on track cleanly. And so he just wasn't expecting, he wasn't expecting him to be there, guys. We come back live. The order has completely swapped around from what it was before, and now it might swap around again. This is Tyler Gilmet ahead of them that's slowing them up through a very fast portion for the HBDs. That gives a run to the second place, Scott McGarvey. But it also gives an even better run to Billy Smith back there in third. We're looking at three wide for the lead. Smith is gonna split the middle, try and sit it the hard way through, back up to the lead. Despite the setbacks, last round's winner gets himself into first. 
Billy Smith stayed behind the big block of air that would be moved out of the way by Tyler Glomet, got the run, had a huge momentum, got both drivers. That was incredible. My goodness, and he's still got some more lap traffic as uh, they go by Eric and Tilly. And Tilly not running as high as we're used to seeing him in the past couple rounds. He's down in six in that class. And guys, they're about to come up on this battle for third and fourth between Shane Hunter and Lionel Duprat. Those two guys are right next to one another. So this might be an opportunity for everybody in these battles to make a move. They managed to clear Mike Major and get onto the Wellington straight. They're gaining as they come up to Brooklyn's. Duprat stays off to the right. Unfortunately, this is going to hurt him as Smith sneaks through. Maybe he can go around the outside of Shane Hunter. He's going to try and make it stick. They all stay dutifully to the inside, except for when, look at this, Scott McGarvey deciding to take a slightly alternate line. And all this messing around has now made it a four-car fight. Mark Wilson is in there. Wilson with the run right behind McGarvey right now. This is fun. And I think, I think Adam had a lot to, when these guys start to get up to the battles that these guys are fighting in the GTDs, that would be quite as easy. Coming up on Santana. When Smith backs out of it, he saw that he didn't have the space. That slows up his momentum. We got another run. This time it is Leif Peterson tries to seal some draft from our leader, Slavonic, in the GTDs. Doesn't help him nearly enough. Defensive move from Billy Smith up to Stowe. The order stays the same. Smith, Peterson, McGarvey, Wilson. Wilson gets through as well, so it's still a four-car battle. It's about to become a five-car battle. Dean Mole is not far behind, guys. He's trying to climb up there and jump on these other prototypes. This is, this is just bonkers. I don't think we've ever seen this big of a fight for the lead in the prototypes before in this series. And they're all doing it through traffic without really running anybody off the road that we've seen yet down into village one more time. Wow, Peterson is taking it in deep. He is trying hard to get up to the top spot. We're used to seeing Gerard, names like Gerard and Andra and, and uh, Omer in here. These guys are putting it in the oh, Guys, Shane Hunter, Shane Hunter just got spun around as well. Yeah, yeah that Sheldon was, Rosenbaum got him. Mm -hmm. That we were looking at the same thing, different drivers down into village. Just tips the back of him, but uh, curiously, Rosenbaum doesn't hit him hard, and then he immediately toes to the pits. We had an off a big off track beforehand. I didn't notice that. No. Yeah, I think so, guys. It's just he was. Yeah, I, I think it was just a guilt toe. I think he just realized that he didn't want to be a part of that mess anymore and just decided to tow himself. So finally, our leaders in the prototypes get a little bit of a breather now that they've passed all the GTD cars. And that's actually been a boon for Billy Smith because he is pulling away from Lee Peterson in the clean air. Heard some talk with... Robert Kanchin, not sure if he had some contact with somebody. Yeah, just had a close moment, don't need a replay. He had to take evasive action on Lionel Duprat coming through cops. So we're about 20 minutes in as Dean Mole now sets the fastest lap of the race from fifth, trying to give chase on this lead pack. I think we're getting into the pit window opening, but we haven't seen a lot of drivers who elect to take early stops yet. Let's see if anybody wants to get away from this craziness and ducks away. Going to the GTLM lead, we can see Laster and Savretic pretty much have a track to themselves. Stephen McGarvey not having the pace that he typically has in races past. Dropped back to about two and a half seconds. It was a two horse race up at the front. What makes this even more interesting, uh, I'm gonna really, if I'm as even worse than colors or manufacturers, but that's a BMW ahead of a Porsche, right? Do I have that right? Yes. All right. Uh, Porsche belonging to William Laster. 
Lawrence of Reddick racing the BMW. The lovingly nicknamed Big Boy that uh, iRacers love to refer to him as. Not Savretic, the car. <laughs> now he opens. This is the biggest gap that Savretic has had on last of the entire race. Opening it up to about a half second. And and credit to Laster here, because we know Savretic is blindingly fast on a good day. So for William to continue to stay this close and, and continue to apply pressure like this, this says something about how good the 26 is here. Scrolling back. Won't be long till the prototypes get there. They're about three corners behind them. I tell you what, though, Smith is... I, I mentioned him liking the clean air. He's got that gap already to up to 1.6 seconds. And from what we saw with how things closed up, and the GTD traffic, Bill. I, I almost wonder if this is intentional, if he has decided he doesn't want to mess around with that again and is trying to get himself a buffer. A little bit of cushion so he can uh, be a little more patient when he makes this move, yeah. Let's see, still the battle for second is awful close. It's Peterson, McGarvey, Wilson, Mole, almost at the tail of it. He's just catching up there in fifth. Oh, and I think we had a change for position down in GTD. Tyler Gilmet, after his setback, just managed to get by Antilly into Village. Yeah, it was just one of those classic setups where you know, it was a, one of those late lunges that really makes it work. He's worked hard on this for a while, but yeah, I think just oh, it's also possible that Antilly made a mistake here. Let's take a look. Hey, I think this is more a mistake from Antilly, unless he's intentionally letting him by. He went awful deep into the corner. And once, once Gilmet got through, he didn't really try to fight it. Gilmet recovering from his spin, working his way up. Yep, and now we have Shane Hunter, who's close in behind Eric Antilly. Let's see whether or not Antilly's struggling with something and doesn't want to get in these guys' way. It's also possible they just outbraked himself. Hunter also had a little bit of a touch earlier, so he might be slightly out of position for his contact with Rosenbaum. So we come back to Smith, just up the road. You can see the 4GT of Ryan Huff, and that will begin the GTLM traffic. Love this run down the Wellington Strait into Brooklyn's. Just a lot of speed into a very difficult corner. Adam, I always, I always like to compare this. It's almost like a, a, a mega-sized version of the first few corners at uh, Montreal. Yeah, a little bit, but it's also it's a lot flatter than those corners. So it, it definitely has a different profile especially with the fact that you know with it being that flat there's no banking to help you out so you're really relying on the downforce of your car and your tires to get you through so as much as montreal is really Whoa! fun and stupid going around his huff going off in the sand to avoid trouble with scott mcgarvey it all started when i believe it was one of the it might have been lee peterson trying to go around him yeah huff was put a little bit offline you're gonna see Big damage on McGarvey as he gets into the side of Huff. Just had nowhere to go. Scott McGarvey, after his incredible championship run last season, not able to retain the crown. And though this is not the last race, his season has been capped off by some less than desirable results. Just to help out the fans that are new to the series, there are two McGarveys, Scott and Stephen. They're both champions. Stephen, the more handsome of the two. <laughs> As uh, we watch Wilson here in third now because of that problem, gets promoted onto the podium. He's now chasing Peterson, but Peterson has seriously lost touch with Billy Smith. It's a whole 2.3 seconds between them. 
Yeah, guys, while we were watching that, Kevin Santana had a moment where I think some he had some sort of technical issue. He uh, Paul Slavonic was breaking for one of the corners, and Kevin Santana just could not break in time. He had to dodge him and go to the right, go into the grass, and then come back onto the track. So Santana now a f almost three and a half seconds behind. Uh, sorry, almost three seconds behind Paul Slavonic. So Slavonic now can regroup and cool off his tires, which were he was starting to lose a little bit. So Santana in a secure position right now going into the pit stops. But only Lytle DePratt now between Santana and Major in that battle for that uh, GTD championship. Yeah, Major's been chasing DePratt around lately. DePratt's starting to struggle on his tires as well and under braking. He's got a little bit of a tight scenario going on. This is the close ma closest Major has been. Let's see whether or not he'll take a risk here. But as you can see, he's just not gaining enough down the straights. I think that has to do with his setup. He's definitely a lot more comfortable through the twisty bits on this late, uh, late run setup, though. So he's definitely been able to gain some time on DePratt lately. Major is the tortoise in a field full of GTD hares. That's what I think. He's just, he's just gonna bring it home clean. Well, he did look strong at the end of the race two weeks ago at Phillip Island as well. So you might be onto something there, Bill. Maybe his car set up to be stronger at the end of a run. That's entirely possible, guys, but it's gonna have to be really strong. But that being said, this is also the closest that Mike Major has been to Kevin Santana. Kevin is only about 4.6, uh, 4.1 seconds up the road from him and falling fast. So Mike Major in a good position to really challenge Santana. Let's, let's go to Billy Smith if we could, because it's eclipse time now as the two leaders are going to get together. Here's this battle with Servretic and Lasser that has been nosed to hell the whole time. Now this could actually break it up as the prototypes start to come through. Smith has a nice cushion of about a second and a half. He should be able to get through smooth. And of course, it also broke down a little bit there when McGarvey had his trouble. So they're not four in a row like they were before. It should be a break for uh, Servetic and Laster that they're all not coming one, two, three, four. Oh, but they're going to catch them in the Maggots Beckett sequence. Peterson comes right up behind Laster and just squeezes oh. through in time. He is hustling to see what he can make up, contact. but he actually makes contact with Dennis Savretic. Laster sees that. He carries the speed better out of Chapel and onto the hangar straight. They've got more traffic coming through. Wilson should be able to easily get by by the braking zone, but with Laster fully ahead, by the time they get on the biters, you can now hand the lead to the 26. Oh my goodness, my magic, my, my crystal ball is working at full strength right now. I just had a hunch that was gonna happen. Uh, you do this long enough, you start to get a sense of when things are <laughs> yep. going wrong. Don't forget in all of this, remember we saw Josh Wolf looking pretty good earlier and then suddenly spin out. He's only gotten back to fifth and well, two of those positions because we've had two DNFs. See him go by William Laster as well through uh, Farm and Abbey. Well, I'll tell you one thing. This may have may explain why Laster was able to stay on the back of Servetic. Once once Laster got around Servetic, he's opened it up. He's going. Curious how much of this is going to be the traffic that they dealt with and how much of this is pure pace because now they've got nobody trying to work their way yep. through. See what Dennis can do. The gap right now, 1.2. Getting close to pit stop times for the prototypes. We're just about at the halfway mark. This penultimate round certainly zipping by pretty quickly. Your leaders, if you're just joining us, is Billy Smith in the prototypes, Laster having recently taken the lead in the GTLMs, and Paul Slavonic, who's been up at the front since essentially the drop of the green there in the GTDs. Slavonic on two wins this season. Looked like he wasn't going to have the best of races last round. And then after a lap two smash into the wall, somehow recovered uh, greatly up to the front of the field. Yeah, guys, I want to touch on P2 in the GTDs, actually, because we have a we're about to have a coming uh, collision of worlds here. We have Kevin Santana, who after his accident, after his late breaking accident, he's oh, been yeah. falling back into the clutches of Lionel DePratt. We have Mike Major, who's been chasing DePratt ever since the drop of the green flag. And now we have Tyler Guillemette, who's recovering from his earlier spin. All four of these guys are going to come together at some point. It's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top. Adam, I think Gilmet might be the fastest of the four of them. 
Oh, he definitely is, especially over the last couple laps. He's been gaining by at least a quarter of a second a lap, so he's really got the measure of these guys. And now we've got some clouds coming over the circuit, which is going to change the profile of how they drive this as well. I was just about to say, it's getting awful dark out there. Appropriate uh, that the British weather is being a little finicky. We come down the old pit straight and through cops. You can see our four car train oh. between Santana, Duprat, Major, and Gilmet. Man, Mike Major was really tight there through a couple of those corners going into the maggots back at sequence but he's real look how good he is through here he's definitely set his car up for this but on exit he's extremely tight and that's gonna allow gilmet to get a run he's gonna go to look to the inside gilmet looking to get back to that second place he was before he could have been looking at the lead earlier if not for his problems he comes through the inside and into stow tyler gilmet moves himself to fourth Major needs to follow Gilmet up to Duprat and through Santana. He's got to follow him through both of those guys if he wants a chance at this championship. As all this was happening, Josh Wolf had a look at a pass on Dean Mole. Since then, it didn't happen, but he's going to, well, I thought he was going to have another try into Stowe himself. He is awful close behind the number 79. Rounding out another lap. We had one of our drivers and the prototypes come in for a scheduled stop. That was Robert Kanchen, split in it almost exactly halfway. He's since come back out. Shane Hunter in the GTDs is also in. He's in for a scheduled stop. Looks like he's going to be taking fuel and tires. So very interesting to see what the strategy is. He's going for the undercut today. Not often we see that strategy happen. Josh Wolf, who uh, once again seems a little bit sloppy ever since he had his spin, keeps getting very close to the back of the money. Stephen McGarvey's got him. No. And that was. Looks like he oh was my. coming up behind Gilbert. If you want an interesting onboard, Shane Hunter got a big wake up call exiting the pits because that's exactly where McGarvey spun into. In fact, he had to go off the track to avoid him. Watch on the replay here. This is McGarvey there you see in the BMW. He gets a gather back up, gets on the throttle, but when he gets it straightened out, he's right on pit exit. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Usually you're not expecting to have to avoid cars <laughs> coming out of that pit lane. It's Perfect well out of the racing yeah. line. Yeah. So good job to both drivers for avoiding a worse incident. Let's go to third place in the GTDs where things continue to be close. Yeah, Mike Major's not really being able to hang on to Tyler Gilmet, but Gilmet is charging his way forward. He's gotten close to Duprat a couple of times. He doesn't get a good exit there, but yeah, this is giving an opportunity to Mike Major. We'll see whether he tries to pass him back. And both Santana and Duprat suffered from misfortune due to traffic last round. Here's so, traffic again. Billy Smith making his way through this oh battle. Boy. Yeah, so this is bad news for them, the way things have been going lately. They both lost out on good results. Uh, Duprat, with his own class spinning in front of him, took him out. Kevin Santana, early in the race, a car that was uh, had problems earlier on but was a faster class, came through and shoved him out of the way at Phillip Island. Billy Smith, as he approaches for the second time lapping them, He's going to try and stay well clear so that they don't get more irate. But at the same time, he's still trying to run away from Lee Peterson, who is also weaving his way through. This is starting to get really complicated, guys. These GTD drivers are doing a good job of being aware of where those prototypes are going to be. But everyone having to be a little kind and compromise a little bit as they're going through this sector. Smith dealing with it pretty well. He's got about a 1.8 second gap now that they've both gotten by those GTD cars. Not as big as it been, used to be, but big enough. While I've been looking at this, Eric Antilli has come into the pits and come out again. Gerard Gilbert has done it as well, as well as Joshua Wolf and Robert Kanchin. Interesting that Wolf has had an early stop. It's also a much shorter stop than what Kanchin had. 
if Kanchin had some damage he had to deal with is that's more lap traffic that Wolf is going around. Remember, he was battling with Dean Mole, who has yet to pit himself. And actually, I take that back because Mole is coming in right now. So is Wilson. Wonder if Wolf can manage to jump him through strategy. See this very unique looking pit lane. As they trundle down towards their stalls. Have to come around a corner to get in. You skip a chicane. And then you can see the track goes much higher than them as it continues on its more flat terrain. Blaster stays out ahead of Servretic. About, the, about those two, about Laster and Servretic. Servretic was actually able to run down Laster in clean air, so I think Servretic has no problem with pace. It spread up a little bit when they started to get through the GTDs, but these guys are going to be nose to tail. It all could come down to who has the best pit stop. Uh, Mole is back out, so is Wilson. Uh, but Josh Wolf was the second quicker in his stall, and it might just pay off. He breaks into Village just enough to stay ahead of Dean Mole. So hand P4 to the 148. That was ever so tight. And I tip the hat to Mark Wilson up there in third as well, having a good run. Remember when they had that four-car battle? It was a three-car battle till Wilson get to the back of it, and now he's a... Uh, Head of all of them, except for Lee Peterson. Yeah, guys, from what I'm seeing, the undercut definitely is working right now. Those who have pitted are definitely faster by somewhere in the realm of one to two tenths a lap. So you got to be careful. And if you are noticing that as a driver on the track, you got to get in now. Bit surprised as we got uh, a couple more of our leaders in Smith and Peterson. That's the last of the prototypes. I would think with the relatively cool temperatures we've got, it's only 88 degrees on the track surface. The undercut wouldn't work that well. So still something to keep aware of as the GTD battle up at the front continues to be exciting. Tyler Gilmet's got his best opportunity this time on Lionel DePratt. He's gonna have to make something work very quickly if he wants to pass him before they get into the pit stop cycle. That's probably the best opportunity he's gonna have. He's really gotta get something done here. Let's see whether he does a late dive. He thinks about it, but no, not that time. Not quite close enough. The, the Audi... Oh, go ahead. Well, the GTDs can usually run farther than the, the prototypes and the GTLMs. If I was Gilmet, Adam, or I'd be thinking about maybe doing something different than the guys in front of me. Duprat's holding them up. Yeah, I think I would stop early. Oh, well, I mean, he might not be holding there them up go. much longer. There wow! Gilmet just sliding it through that to get through. He's going to try and hold on to it here. But look at this, Duprat. Good run on the outside, but he just can't hold it. And that's Gilmet passed. Tyler is on a mission. Let's watch that one more time. As soon as the opportunity was there, he was not waiting for a second invitation. Let's watch this from above. Yeah, I had clicked There's away. One. I thought he was too far back to do anything. <laughs> he just slid it all the way through here. Just kept his foot on down as he went through that corner. What just an amazing job to hang on to it, but his, his rear tires have got to be barking back at him at this point. Let's see his hands from on board as well. Tiny little counter steers just managing it all the way through. Wow. That looks so calm from on board compared to outside the car. Probably didn't feel a calm inside. <laughs> that gives him P3 now. Santana and Slavonic, the only ones ahead of him. Just touch and here real quick. We don't need to go there. Servretic made a pit stop. You oh. talked about the uh, undercut. I think Servretic might be trying to do Sorry. Let, let's, let's go to Wolf because he just had a big moment trying to make an overtake on Wilson, and it's not done yet. Wilson to the outside into Stowe. Wolf is hot into the corner. This could switch right back. Indeed, he knows that he doesn't have the momentum. Tries oh, no. to cover him off. They come together, and that shoves Wilson all the way off into the grass. Wolf has to cut through the Veil chicane. That did not end well. This started with a three-wide scenario down the hangar straight with our leader in the GTLM, mind you. That was Laster they're going by. And Wilson has quite an adventure here. 
as he uh, does a little exploring of the English countryside here. Uh, I don't think he intentionally was going to explore because it, it almost it looked here. like Wolf. Wolf trying to drift over to the racing line. Yeah. He goes through here. He's a lot of his way to Stonehenge, I think. <laughs> no, he finds it. Eventually gets back on the track. Interestingly, Wolf has not given the position back. In fact, he's not too far behind Dean Mole. I wonder if the student, uh, the stewards, will have something to say about that post race. He might actually have third position here soon because he looks much faster than Mole. Guys, update in the GTDs. Kevin Santana got a slowdown penalty through Stowe and had to give up, give up. Second and third, uh, sorry, third and fourth positions. So he's he's now way back down in the fourth position in GTDs. That promotes Tyler Gilmet up to second place and Lionel Pratt up to third. Put Santana just ahead of Mike Majors. Great news this, for Major. Yeah, this is the battle for the championship live, and Kevin Santana's going to pit. Let's see if this will help him, though. We've seen the undercut work in some of the other classes, but what about here in the GTDs? Less than 20 minutes left on the clock. Okay, Laster making a stop from the lead of the GTLMs. So Vredic has already made his. Did not take tires, as would be expected. Young also in, so that will be the last of the GTLMs as well. Savretic is still coming down hangar straight. Laster has reached his stall. Nope, still not quite yet. It's a long ways down to his stall. There you see the number nine of Savretic. Up to Vale now. Laster in for about 10 seconds, stationary. Everybody else at about between 11 and 15 seconds. Laster, very quick, 13 seconds for him. So Vredic, 14 seconds, he was a little slower. Where is Laster gonna be? He is gonna be ahead of Savretic, retains the lead. But guys, this is perfect, perfect weather. This, this cloud that's come over is perfect for those who are coming out of the pits right now. That it's gonna give them the fastest speeds possible on those new hot tires, so. These guys are going to be really interesting to see what, what kind of lap times they can put in. So we've got a little bit of traffic in front of them. Christopher Sherburn and Shane Hunter is ahead of our GTLM leader as we ride on board with some credit looking up towards him. A little bit of a buffer for Laster. He can not be quite so aggressive as he works his way through those slower cars. He's got Hunter now. He's already negotiated Sherburn. And this is a that much is different... going to work out real good. Yeah. Adam, this is a much bis different beast than the, the prototypes oh. dealing with the GT cars, though. Guys, oh, what? Well, something really interesting happened. We just had... Uh, our, I, I think Dean Mole just cut across the grass to get to the pits. So did uh, Tyler Gilmet. A bunch of guys cutting across the grass to get to pit lane. I don't know whether everyone made it. Uh, I don't know if Mole did that intentionally. He was to the outside of Tyler Gilmet. There you're going to see it right here. Yeah. Oh, he just. I think it, both of them were trying to get to the pits and both of them came together. I didn't see contact from that angle because it starts to look like Mole wants to come back to the track, but then decides not to. I don't know what happened there. Well, Mike Major's in the pits as well, so we'll see what happens here with Kevin Santana, whether Kevin can make the pass here on him. And a whole Gilmet, Gilmet with a long stop. And Santana does come out in front of Mike Major, but the gap is about what it was when he came into the pits. So this is going to be a battle to the end of the race between these two for the championship points for today. I think Maul was trying to get around Gilmet on the inside, and Gilmet was trying to pit. Maul was forced to go ah. into pit lane. He didn't want to do it. He's already made a stop. And then Gilmet had to pit. And he gets a penalty for going across, not entering safely. Since we're in England by Jove Holmes, you've cracked the code. <laughs> or Elementary, Tyler Gilmet, though. He's uh, number five is just 
not been having the day he wanted, especially considering the pace that he had early in this race. I, I don't think this finishing position is really where uh, this Audi should have been finishing. You know, the undercut may be working to get people positions, but those fresh tires are really working for just about everybody. We're seeing gaps of two seconds closed down to one here. Mike Major catching Kevin Santana. I mean, like these, it's quite amazing the difference between new tires and old tires here on at Silverstone to see just how much of time it gains you on track. Were all of our, our GTDs taking tires today? Or is no. it just they cooled them down? I think it just cooled them down. I think it's just about managing how hot your tires are. You got to remember that these guys are, you know, these, these tires are running really hot, especially around here. So really fascinating. Well, that is the last of our pit stop. So let's run down through the field in these final, final 15 minutes, starting with our prototypes. Billy Smith has had some action very early and then once he saw that happening, he decided he wanted no more of that. He built the gap and hasn't looked back since. It's about five, almost six seconds back to the car in second place. That is Leif Peterson, who is on a very good run for Leif, honestly. This is going to be a, a well-earned podium for the number 39. Had a whiff of the lead earlier on, but it looks like it was not to be lacking the pace that Smith has. Then you get back to third place. I'm honestly amazed that Josh Wolf is on the podium right now. Even though he also has had speed, I, I can't even recount all the action that this guy has been through in less than 60 minutes of racing. He still has more to go. Let's hope he can have a little bit more of a calmer ending. Mark Wilson temporarily held the podium, got rudely shoved off course by Josh Wolf. Unfortunately, uh, he is going to uh, have to relinquish that and settle for fourth for now. Still racing left to go. That could change. Robert Kanchin inherits fifth place after Dean Mole as well, suddenly goes off course and has an emergency pit stop. So the number 199 uh, finds himself with a top five in what is a relatively small field in the prototypes today, Bill. William Laster spent the first part of the race on the tail of Dennis Savretic, made the pass. They both made pit stops and now Laster does his best to run away from Savretic, not able to do it. Dennis back by just 1.2 seconds, racing in second. A large gap back to Mike Young. Now, this is interesting. Young is in a real battle right behind is Ralty. As Young works his way around Hunter, this is something to keep an eye on. Remember, Young sits second in the points ahead of McGarvey. Let's stay on this for a minute because I think that Ralty might make the pass here. As he moves to the inside, there was a slower lap traffic. They go side by side through the corner. Careful, boys. Let's see how this sorts out. I think that maybe Young is going to be able to get the power down. Joe, this is a good one. It's not done yet because Gralty has the inside as they come through Vale. It's going to switch back into club, though. Young now has the advantage, but can he get the power down? Still no one willing to give up. Oh, but Gralty almost gets squeezed off course, off the corner. Now they're going to hit Abby and Farm. I don't know if you can do these two wide in these cars. They're going to try it anyways. Gralty with the advantage as they come up to Village and break. He's got the inside covered off. And I think he finally has it done over Young. Indeed, he does. That's going to give third to, uh, to Gralty. And to round out the top five, you go all the way back to Stephen McGarvey, who's leading in the points. He's going to lose a few to Mike Young, but probably not enough to worry about losing the championship. Adam, GTD? Definitely. Paul Slavonic has had this race unlocked since the beginning. It looked for a little bit like Tyler Gilmet was going to challenge him for the lead, but it was not to be after Gilmet's spin. Then we go back to Lionel Duprat in second place. Lionel Duprat is doing a great job, a really consistent race from him. He's just been Mr. Consistency this whole time, and because of a couple of spins ahead of him, he's held down second position. Now back to Kevin Santana. Kevin's had his share of problems, but he's been able to do some good recovery as we see the GTD leader, the GTLM leaders snaking through here. Kevin Santana's actually struggling a little bit on grip at this stage in the race, and Mike Major is within one second and will definitely have an opportunity to close as they go three wide down this straight. Multi-class action at its best. Behind him is Eric Intilly, 10 seconds back. Eric Intilly, another consistent driver. He's been doing an excellent job this entire race as well, just holding position and trying to catch Mike Major, but he just doesn't quite have the pace for it. 
And you talked about those GTLM leaders coming through. They closed in a lot with that traffic, but now it is spreading back apart. Laster, despite uh, maybe a bit of panic, has managed to breathe now because he's got 1.5 seconds. So Reddick's still dealing with Santana himself. I mentioned it earlier, it's a very different beast trying to get by uh, the GTD cars. If you're in these GTLMs, they're relatively close on pace. Yeah, they really are, guys, and it's just fascinating to see just how, just where the GTLMs have the pace over the GTDs. It's not really where you'd expect. They tend to have the pace actually on the straights, and the GTDs do well through the corners around here at Silverstone. It's kind of surprising. Like under 10 minutes to go, Majors is just like two, three car lanes behind Santana now. This is fun to watch. Yeah, Kevin Santana is struggling a lot on the brakes right now. He... I think he's got a little bit, uh, his rear tires have really given up a little bit, so he's got some rearward brake bias in that thing. That's just making it so he can't do anything but brake in a straight line. And that's really challenging around here in Silverstone where you have a lot of braking, light braking zones that are corners. Like coming up to this one right here, Mike Major is able to get into the corner a lot better than Santana because he can brake and turn just a little bit. So Santana struggling with his tires right now. Going to have to fend him off for just a few more minutes, but so will Gralty on Young. He had recently gotten by Young, but Grault, or, uh, Young is not going to let him get away oh, with it. Guys, very I want to take you back to P3 in the GTDs. It looks like Mike Major has his opportunity because Kevin Santana got a slowdown penalty, and that's going to allow Mike Major to get by and take that position away. Tortoise in the hair, baby. Tortoise in the hair. Mistakes like that that might lose you a championship. There you see the replay. Now, it isn't necessarily dire at this point, though, Adam. If they finish close to each other, this will be third and fourth. So I'm looking to see what those points pay out exactly. It looks like 30 and 28. So a two-point difference in terms of what they earn. And they're tied coming into this thing. So it, at least they can go into the final round knowing, all right, all I got to do is at least finish well and ahead of my competitor. Yeah, definitely. And Kevin Santana has had Mike Major's number when it comes to qualifying, but Mike Major's race pace is significantly more consistent and faster than Santana's. So Santana is going to have to work on his consistency and saving his stuff for the end of the race, and Mike Major is going to have to work on his qualifying for next week. Santana's going to send out invitations to, to Bradley, Haley, and all the other guys not to show up because... Santana has got to beat Majors, but like you said, Joe, it, it, the points, the differential gets gets smaller farther down the order they go. So, uh, I'm not if sure that what, makes sense to you. Yeah, I'm not sure what Haley would do, though, since he's racing in GTLM this season. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> he, he'll be welcome to come anyways. Meanwhile, we've been watching this battle between Gralty and Young. This is still for the final step on the podium in the GTLMs. Only six cars still running in this class with seven minutes left to go. I'm going to steal you away. Let's let's go to Laster. This is this is tight. Zervredic had a run. They got Laster got held up by Slavonic. And now here comes a uh, here comes Zervredic. Karma is an interesting one because that's how. Laster got the lead was traffic in that section of corners through the Maggots Beckett sequence, and it's brought Zavretic back in. So as they come up to Gerard Gilbert now, they sneak through him so that they don't get held up through the technical portions leading down to Village. He's going to pull right off to the side. Look at that, blight racing by the 76. Our leaders can continue on unfettered. Apologies to the Sovretic family and friends. I don't know if he has the pace to get Laster clean. He might need a little help from lap traffic. See, my family and friends are always the ones that are brutally honest about my pace. So. <laughs> no, I get the emails. <laughs> Coming down the Wellington Strait. Sovretic about a half second back. He was as close as three tenths of a second dealing with that lap traffic. They've got nobody up ahead. It is clear sailing. It's going to have to be a straight fight for, uh, to the end between these two. 
And guys, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Mike Major and Kevin Santana are battling side by side right now. It looks like Mike Major got to slow down a little bit on the last straight. And so Kevin Santana had an opportunity to come back at him, but it just hasn't worked for him yet. Let's see whether Santana can get a run here. This is a really intense battle between a bunch of different cars right now. We got Daniel Grolte and Mike Young behind them as well. Yeah, that is the battle we've been watching for third. And also, don't forget Josh Wolf in the prototype you can see there coming up trying to stay out of things. He's not fighting with anybody, but he doesn't want to get held up too much and lose time. Picks his way through, tiptoeing amongst the two other classes. Now everybody streams into the Maggots Beckett sequence. How is this going to sort out? There's so much to keep track of here. Going around the outside of Major. Oh, and he has no to go. Room. That was uh, Gilbert. Oh! He had to go around. No, no. That was Gilbert in the blue car to the inside, and that slowed up Santana. Gralty as well, somehow got, they caught out the other end. No change for position. My goodness. Oh, look at this. Mike Young right on Gralty now. Let's see whether or not they can make this move. It might be three wide. Look at that. Gralty covering him off. Well, he covers him off, but he's going to put himself to the inside of club looking behind Mike Major to see if that will help him out, and it doesn't quite pay off. But it does slow up Major a little bit as now we can see Santana closing in on the background. They fly into the Happy Kink. Mark Wilson in behind them. Is he going to be able to get by without holding both of them up? They break for Village. It'll deny the apex for Mike Major. Santana poking his nose, but it goes to the outside of the loop. Still dealing with that traffic. Once again, compromising Major on the exit of that left-hander. And here we go again, down the Wellington Strait. We ride on board with Kevin Santana, weaving to the inside. Major trying to cover him off. He knows this has championship implications. He's deep into the brakes on Brooklyn's, misses the apex, but so does Santana. Doesn't get the position away. This is not over yet, Adam. You guys are just duking it out. Mike Major doing his best to put his car wherever he can to try and block off Kevin Santana. Kevin Santana trying to do what he can to follow all the traffic through. Not working for him either. But it looks like Mike Major's down on top speed a little bit. Kevin Santana coming back at him. Who would have thought with one round to go would tie for the championship lead? And these two fighting for third place out on track directly behind them. That is Stephen McGarvey. He has no one to fight with. He doesn't need to interrupt this. He's gonna wait till he gets a clean chance to go by. They come out of at, or a Chapel Corner. I don't think that's enough of a run for Santana, if I'm honest. It's not, and McGarvey's gonna take away Santana's apex. He's gonna have to break really hard here. He's gonna try and diamond the corner a little bit and get a good run off. That's just not how that corner works. Steven McGarvey's now going to look at taking away Mike Major's apex. No, he stays behind him. This is just going to benefit Major. And as all this is happening, let's hold on. And I think, I think we shouldn't get interrupted here. If McGarvey can just get by Major, Major's going to have to lift, though. Oh, could this be the opportunity that Santana needs? He gains a lot coming through Abbey and down into Farm. He's just too far back as they break for anyway. Village. He's, oh, I didn't think that was going to happen. Santana's desperate. He's desperate to get by Mike Major. He knows how important this is, but he gets on the dirt, and there goes his run. Mike Major with a clean run down the straight, and that's going to secure it for him right now. It finally allows us to look over to the battle for the lead bill in GTLM, which was also down... Uh, this is P3, actually, that we're looking at between Young and Gralty side by side. That is Young to the outside in the Porsche. Gralty in the, the BMW. The GTD of Lionel Duprat on the outside. He's going to lift to try and let them through, but they're still almost looking to the three wide as Mike Young tries to poke oh, his nose in. Oh, he tips him around completely, and he comes to a halt to allow him to get that position back. But that costs them both because there goes Stephen McGarvey up onto the podium. Now we can go to the leaders now in the GTLMs. Right nose to tail is Savretic. He's making a move on the back of Laster. Oh, but he overcooked Laster's, the corner. Yeah, seems to be faster now. It was really close. Peterson got his prototype in there, mixed it up a little. Josh Wolf has made their way through. This battle continues with under a minute of racing to go. 
Billy Smith still has a little bit to go. He just got the white flag. He has about three quarters of a lap left. So these God. two are going to come around and get one more to go. Guys, I can't believe I'm saying this again, but Kevin Santana has made his way past Mike Major. We'll come back to the replay in a bit. That could still swing back because Major's close to him. We're watching them chase just behind Gralty and Young, who are still squabbling for what is now fourth instead of third. Meanwhile, GTLM lead coming onto the well Wellington Straight. William Laster with a great run up to Brooklyn's. That's not going to allow Dennis Savretic to have a go here. This is Mark Wilson. Wilson's a veteran. I would not be surprised if Wilson just sits back there for this final lap, doesn't get involved in this at all. It wouldn't be an Autobahn race without everything going nuts oh, at the end. No! I what can't believe to it, guys. Up. Kevin Santana has been disqualified. Oh, oh my After goodness. contact with Mike Major, Kevin Santana has been disqualified from this race. Meanwhile, our leader comes up to Stowe. Billy Smith with a monumental lead since we last looked. 15 seconds back to Leif Peterson, about the only driver who has had a calm end to this race. The 901, we talked about him redeeming himself. Well, if it's not redemption anymore, this has got to be domination now. Billy Smith with the win. Up next gonna be William Laster. This isn't over. Dennis Servretic within half a second. A tiny slip up will open the door. And I think that Servretic is gonna be just pounding his way through if he gets the slightest whiff. They come up to Vale, doesn't get it there. Laster just needs to be smooth onto the power out of club corner. And he is the number 26. Gets a victory finally here at Silverstone. And you Puzzle. know what? Slavonic might be in this thing, Adam. Another victory on the cards for the 528. As he comes out of club, he gains yet more ground on his two championship rivals. It's definitely going to change things, guys. All right. We're watching at the uh, replay of the GTLMs first. Leave. This is this is the incident between uh, Ralty and and Young. I mean, into cops. I mean, I don't blame them for the aggressive move, Bill. It's just yeah, it didn't work. And fair game, he let him have it back. Yeah, the winner of that was Stephen McGarvey. Bolter two spots. Ralty wound up finishing ahead of Young in the end watching it from on board it was so marginal he had to have known he was going to stick his nose in but he also really couldn't give much away there hence why that happened as we now go to the pass for the third place in gtd this one worked yeah i think this was because of mike major's slowdown coming off the the former corner once again as he said karma is very interesting but then as they battled on later in the lap, Mike Major just came together with Kevin Santana just a little bit, and it was just enough to garner himself a 4X, and that knocked him out. Let's see whether we got it. So here's the moment that he disappears. Bill, do you have your uh, camera ready? Can we ride on board because I'd like to know where you go when you blink away. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know guys, what? Go ahead. That was the moment. That was the moment Kevin Santana's championship blinked away as well. That's going to put him down to P9 for this race. You know, Santana probably upset by that, but but Mike Majors doesn't know how many incidents Santana has. You get kind of you get down to the end of the race without any incidents left. That's kind of the price you pay. Yeah, but he's the car behind. I I, I guess if if I would allow anybody a grievance, it would be it, it would be Santana since that took him out of the race. Well, whatever the case, we'll hopefully get to talk to a few of them post-race to get some thoughts as we watch Laster celebrate with some donuts. We'll come back here with the unofficial results as well as driver interviews. Stick around because on screen you'll see all the upcoming races here on the GSRC.
Welcome back to Silverstone Circuit. Here in the Audubon Sports Car Challenge, you cannot uh, to, you cannot count things <laughs> over, really, until that checkered flag falls on the last race of the season, which was not this. This was only the penultimate round, and we've had the championship turned upside down. At the results, though, up in the prototypes, it couldn't have really been turned upside down too much, except for the fact that Billy Smith is having a great bit of momentum at the end of the season with his second victory in a row, his third on the season here at Silverstone. Leif Peterson followed him home a distant second, but Leif with some good pace early on. Josh Wolf, uh, a spin at the start of the race, unfortunately put him to the back of the field. He eventually climbed back to the podium, but he had some aggressive moves along the way. Mark Wilson finished behind him in fourth. Robert Kanchin with a P5, and then Dean Mole, unfortunately. Uh, once again, luck not on his side. The racing guides uh, eventually put him in P6 in the end. Bill? A battle nose to tell the entire race between William Laster and Dennis Sobretic. Laster gets the best of it. He gets the win. Sobretic will have to settle for second. Stephen McGarvey was racing for fifth most of the second half of the race behind Daniel Gralty and Mike Young until they got together. McGarvey vultures third. Gralty will get fourth. And Mike Young, who was looking to pick up points on McGarvey and was going to do so until he got together with Gralty, will have to settle for fifth with Olivier Chicot, the final car finishing the race in the GTLMs. Adam? Paul Slavonic coming home with a very, very secure win for him. He was a full, like, 30 seconds ahead of Lionel Duprat. Duprat coming home in second, a very secure and safe drive for him. Mike Major, after what will likely become controversial contact with his championship rival, Kevin Santana, will come home on that last podium spot. Eric Antilli, a good drive for him, coming home in fourth position after a pretty quiet night. Shane Hunter, after having a little bit of trouble coming home in fifth position. Tyler Gilmet, same thing with him, coming home in sixth. Matt Owens is going to come home in seventh position. Chris Sherburn, eighth. Kevin Santana, after getting DQ'd, will come home in ninth. And then Gerard Gilbert is our final finisher in tenth in the GTDs. And of course, uh, Mark Kudrowski with uh, a DNF today with Scott McGarvey also not finishing this race. Ryan Huff, a DNF, Sheldon Rosenbaum, Alan Haysbeck, Joey Trungale, and then Jason Girard was a did not start. We're going to talk to our winners and a few other drivers of interest, starting with a winner in the prototypes, Billy Smith, uh, with his second win in a row. Billy, uh, you looked pretty comfortable at the first part of the race, and then you hit GTD traffic for the first time. Suddenly, you found yourself with a bit of train of cars behind you. Uh, it looked like uh, that maybe kind of lit a fire, because as soon as you got through the GTD cars, suddenly you were off like a shot. Did that affect how you were handling things? Well, uh, yeah, it was, it was a crazy race. Uh, to be honest, I was running a low downforce, and I think uh, most everyone else was running medium. And the uh, high temperatures at the start of the race really... Uh, was causing me a lot of issues i noticed uh after a few laps they started reeling me back in and uh yeah that was i knew it was gonna be hard from the, the past and then uh once further into the race it started cooling down which really helped me a lot um i would have been in really big trouble if the race started an hour earlier obviously in the championship you were helped a little bit by john ulmer's misfortune with his computer troubles uh earlier today uh, this might actually jump you up into second. Is, is that going to be your goal, retaining second when we get to Spa in two weeks? Um, if I can get uh, to second, that would be uh, great, and that's obviously what I'd be we be aiming for. Um, Jason, Jason obviously has got it locked up. So uh, if I can get to second, then that's that's what we'll, we'll try to do next uh, race. Third victory in the season. Is there anybody you'd like to thank before we let you go? Uh, I just want to thank you guys and thank uh, John Ulmer for keeping this uh, league this series running. Um, Buddy Leaf, uh, we do a little bit of practice and, and stuff together. And just uh, like I said, you guys for uh, broadcasting this uh, awesome job. That was our winner in the prototypes, Billy Smith. Uh, and we have our winner in the GTD class as Adam is going to be talking to Paul Slavonic. Yeah, Paul, a really good, solid win for you today. A full three seconds ahead of Lionel de Pratt. But early on in the race, it wasn't quite as smooth sailing with Tyler Gilmet giving you some pressure. How did you handle the pressure that he was giving you at the, for the first couple laps? Uh, well, he he definitely was dishing out a, a fair dose of it right from the get-go. So I, I kind of just settled in and figured that this is how it's going to be for the next 60 minutes. And uh, I'm not sure what happened behind, behind me. with uh, was, I saw him spin. I'm not sure if there was contact or whatnot. but 
Um, I always enjoy racing Tyler. He's a clean racer. He, he's a hard racer too, but uh, uh, unfortunate what happened. I was, like I said, look, kind of looking forward to a battle. Yeah, I definitely, unfortunately didn't get that today, but as the track continued to change over the course of the race with the clouds coming in and the temperature going down a little bit, how did your setup change over the course of the race? Uh, well, it's just got really slippery toward, especially towards the end. Um, uh, my front left tire, I was, I was saying some prayers for that thing. And when I, when I made my first stop, it was down to 70%. And as the race went on, the sun kind of dropped a little bit. Um, some of the corners became a little more difficult to see. And then towards the end, the last five minutes, I mean, I was maybe given it, given it 80% because it was just sliding everywhere. So, um, I'm lucky I had a, a bit of a buffer because if, if Lionel was a little closer behind me, I, I would have put up a fight. I don't know how, how good of a fight it would have been though, but, uh, but yeah, the, the track definitely changed, uh, pretty substantially from the, from the start of the race. Yeah. So now comes the big question with Mike major finishing third and Kevin Santana with uh, DQ today, how you're going to be pretty close up there going into the final round on points. Do you favor yourself trying to challenge for the win? Oh, I, I'm going to go for it regardless. You know, I, my goal is to win the last race at spa. I, I was, I really hope, I mean, it, it's not going to happen, but I was really, it'd be really cool if it was a double points race that would really kind of tip the odds. In. <laughs> but um, <laughs> unfortunately I don't think that's going to work, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to send it. I'm going to do the best I can uh, where I'm at right now. I don't have much to lose because I, I'm not sure where the points will. Maybe now I do. I don't know. <laughs> I have to see what the, what the points uh, look like. But uh, I was just really trying to run a, a smooth race today so I could get that extra point for, uh, for, incident, for an incident-free race. Uh, I guess I, I was a little too friendly to, to Billy when he was, when he was uh, putting a lap on me, and I just completely lost it and went off the track, and there goes my extra point. But So if I lose by a point, I'm really going to be pissed at myself. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm going to go out there next race. I'm going to do my very best. And if I can take it, then I'm certainly going to go for it. Well, thanks for talking to us today. And we look forward to seeing you in two weeks at Spa. Absolutely. That's uh, the final showdown. I don't believe it. All right. Thank you, Paul. That was Paul Savonic, the winner in the GTDs. And it looks like we have uh, Leif Peterson with Soup. Serious organizer uh, John Ulmer might want to check his mail, see if Paul Slavonic sent him in anything. <laughs> Hoping maybe to get a rule change for a double points race there to wrap up the season. I got Leif Peterson, second place, 15 seconds behind Billy Smith, 15 seconds ahead of Josh Wolf. But that doesn't tell about how exciting his race was. Leif, there was a middle section of this race where it was frantic for you. It was, yes. Um, Yeah, I, I, I hung on Billy okay. And then uh, second stint, man, he, he, he got some time on me in the pits. He was running low down for, so I had better fuel efficiency. Took less fuel probably, and um, yeah, just traffic. I was just having terrible luck, and then towards the end, I caught Savretic and um, Laster, uh, and I was trying to not interrupt them because I had a little bit of a gap on Josh, and uh, yeah, it didn't work out. So I just kept dropping back and back, and then I got into it with Lionel at one point and had a slowdown penalty. So yeah, I didn't think I was going to ever going to catch. I could pace Billy, but he had such a gap on me. I was just trying to hold position. Yeah, um, traffic played a big factor in both <laughs> when there was a battle and, and the prototypes coming through. Let's talk about you specifically, man. You seem to be getting a feel for the car at the end of the season. You get? Am I wrong in that, or you think your pace is up a bit? No, I definitely am. I've never um, raced this car until this season, and. Um, you know, I started off slow and, and uh, just been building confidence, um, learning to use the arrow, um, learning to trust it. And uh, uh, yeah, it's a completely different animal to drive. So I've had to, to um, watch other people drive, learn where I can, how far I can push and things like that. Talk about using the arrow. I, I saw you, in fact, all the drivers, when you come up behind those GTD cars, man, you get right behind them. They must give you a big toe before you swing out around them. Oh, yeah, it's like driving behind a barn compared to the HPD. <laughs> it is fun to watch when you guys get the fact. Billy Smith got through both of you on a, doing that as he uh, went from third to first. Hey, oh, my God. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? I do. He came in. I thought he was off for – I thought that it would take seconds for him to catch us, if at all. And here he comes splitting us coming into uh, the old <laughs> – uh, what was it? Into uh, – oh, Brooklyn's. 
Yeah, that was quite a move. It caught us. And I got you. Uh, I'm glad you were as happy or as uh, amazed to see what he did as we were watching it. Hey, congratulations on the uh, second place finish today. Thank you so much. Nate Peterson, second place, Joe. Finally, we're talking to a driver who uh, didn't have as good of a finish today, but because he won last week, we wanted to get a chance to talk to him. Mark Kudrowski, a winner from Phillip Island, joins us. First of all, congratulations for, for last week, Mark. It, that had to have been just phenomenal for you with that being your first win of the series. Oh, yeah, it was. was. Thank you very much. It's uh, it's my first win, and I obviously didn't know where to go <laughs> necessarily for the interview, so appreciate you having me on this week. And we've heard some inspirational stories here on GSRC before. We've talked to some really impressive drivers. But when we were told behind the scenes after the race a, a bit of your background, I don't think how many uh, many people are aware that you've not only been through a plane crash, but had to recover physically and uh, find your speed again here on iRacing. So for you to win, this this is really an emotional triumph, it seems. Yeah, it was a you know pretty big deal, and uh, especially against against the talent we have in this league, it's uh, yeah, it's um, you know speechless. <laughs> I guess I've been through a lot, and uh, I've been i racing since 2008, and uh, so I was in the plane crash in 2010, and to come back like this, and you know, man, um, yeah, it's it, you know, I, without words. <laughs> Uh, we were also told you used to be a driver instructor before as well. Uh, what track did you work at and uh, uh, what kind of cars did you teach? Uh, I was in the Porsche Club, Nordstern, so Northern Region. Uh, so we um, you know, instructed a lot at uh, BIR, Brainerd International Raceway. And then I went to uh, like Road America and Mid America and Gingerman and stuff like that. So all the mis- Midwest tracks. Well, that is fantastic stuff. And that's a testament to why you found your speed here as well. You got one more race coming up at Spa. Uh, obviously, a little bit of setup help from your friends helped over at Phillip Island. And even, even though today didn't go well, do you think another top finish is possible uh, to close things out? Yeah, today um, I just was, you know, didn't know the track really well. And I have a sore shoulder. And uh, on the left side, I have partial paralysis. And so the right side, my right shoulder is hurting. And so it's the only good shoulder I have. So I'm kind of nursing it and, uh, you know, got out of the car halfway through. But, uh, yeah, you know, hope to uh, uh, get it fixed up for, you know, uh, two weeks from now. Well, we look forward to seeing you racing again. Hopefully that uh, gets a little bit better and we can talk to you some more for some wins later, sir. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Mark Kudrowski, winner last round, unfortunately, had to settle for 23rd today. And we're going to close up as well on that inspiring interview. Uh, a big thank you, of course, once again to the league, both John Ulmer and everybody behind the scenes who helps him organize for bringing us back for another season of coverage and getting this thing to air. Also, a thank you to the companies that provide the software and hardware for our broadcasts that are listed on your screen. And additional thanks go to June Lalonde, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. Thanks to the team today, Bill, Adam, Amjad, and Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. We're also on social media. Our Twitter is at GSR Channel. Facebook is Global Sim Racing Channel. And Instagram is at GSRC underscore Graham. Head on over to our YouTube page when you get the opportunity. Make sure and hit the big red subscribe button that you see there so that you don't miss a moment here on the GSRC. As we mentioned, we're heading over to Belgium for next round. That'll be Monday, October 7th at 9.15 p.m. Eastern. We also have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen. So check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard. We'll see you on the track.